All right, this is second grade, module three, lesson 20. And in this lesson, we're going to be continuing to model one more, one less, 10 more, 10 less, 100 more, 100 less. Uh, only this time, we're going to be crossing over boundaries, borders. We're going to be crossing over the 10. We're going to be crossing over the 100 um, as we are uh, counting, probably mostly going down. And the idea would be, can students cash in or exchange uh, or unbundle a value for 10 of the next one over? Or can they group 10 together for one in the next column bigger? So suppose we start off with the number 503. So let's go 1, 2, 3, 4, 500, and then 3. All right. So one of the things we want is we want students to be able to say, um, uh, do, you know, we want them to be able to exchange disks, right? So the idea would be, well, what if we took away one? Now how much do we have? Oh, well, we have 502. What if we took away another one? Well, now we have 501. What if we take another one? Oh, now we have 500. So I could, I could write this down. I could say, well, we had 503. Then we had 502, now we have, then we had 501, now we have 500. And the question would be, well, what's next? And so what we want students to be able to say is, well, we, we're going to have to do some cashing in. So we're going to take this 100, and we're going to cash him in for 10 tens. So when I cash, exchange him, I get 10 tens. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have, now I have four hundreds and 10 tens. So that's still 500. Do I have enough to take away another one? No. Well, that's because I need to take one of these tens and cash it in for 10 ones. So I'm going to cash him in for 10 ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now I have four hundreds, nine tens, and ten ones. So that's still five hundred, because all I did was take the original amount and cash things in. So I haven't even taken anything away. But now, do I have a one that I can take away? Sure. Now I can take away a one, and one less, that tells us that one less than five hundred becomes 499. And that's an important thing for our students to learn, is that going crossing over that 100 requires us to lose 100, cash it in for 10 tens, possibly cashing in a 10 for 10 ones, all right? So let's put that aside, and let's take out a new problem. Let's take a look at 10 less than 503. So 10 less than 503, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build 503. So let's get rid of the tens here. Getting rid of all the tens. By the way, did you notice that I had arranged everything in that 10 group, in that 10 frame size to, uh, shape? So there's our number 503. You could see 503. And now we want 10 less. So we need to take away a 10. Well, do we have any 10s? No, we don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to cash in this 100 for 10 10s. So teachers, you're going to ask your students, if I cash this 100 in, what am I going to get? And we want the kids to say 10 10s. So we're going to lay out 10 10s, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're going to do it in that 10 frame shape. One, two, three, four, five. So there's our ten tens. And now, can, can we take away ten? Can we do take away ten? Yeah. So we're going to ten less. So I'm going to take away a ten. And so what do we end up with? Well, we end up with 493. So ten less than 503 is 493. Now, teachers, this is not a trivial problem uh, for our second graders. So we definitely want to be modeling this and so that they can show, we can show why the answer is that way. 
So now, once you've been playing with the games of less than and more than, and it might require bundling and all that sort of stuff, this is just practice, and this is kind of a traditional worksheet. Um, not very exciting, so uh, I'm not going to do all the work, and this is stuff that most parents and teachers can do, uh, even though they're not students of the current Common Core. This is stuff that the old stuff taught us. Uh, let's take a look at B. 10 more than 392. Uh, actually, this is actually kind of tricky because we might say, well, 392. What, what does 392 look like? Well, it's going to look like this. 392. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's our 3. And then 92. And the idea would be if we added 10 more. That means we're going to put one more dot right there. And then we're going to have to start cashing things in, right? Because anytime you have 10 of one number, you could cash it in. And sure enough, we have 10 right here. So by the way, these are the hundreds, these are the tens, and this is the ones. And so if you have 10 tens, you can cash those in. So they're not going to be there anymore, and you're going to get 100. So what is 10 more than 392? It becomes 400 and no 10s and two ones. So it becomes 402. So parents and teachers, ideally we want students to be um, solving these problems in their head or using logic. But absolutely for differentiation purposes, feel free to give your students place value disks or extra paper so that they can draw representations of the place value disks. Oh, let's take a look at H. 10 less than 815 means we're going to take away 1 from the tens column, and that's going to give us 805. So count the numbers allowed to a parent. Uh, parents and teachers, this is a great opportunity to let your students just practice um, counting by ones or by tens or by hundreds. Now you might want to consider, well, let's take a look at B, using an empty number line. One way to do it is to start at 376 and let's skip count by tens. So if I go up by 10, what is that going to give me? That's going to give me 386. Then I'm going to go up by 10, and that's going to give me 396. That looks like a 4. 396. And if I'm going to go up by 10, this is going to be the tricky part because we're crossing over the 100. 396 is going to cross over and give us 406, and we're going to go up by 10, and that gives us 416, and we're going to go up by 10, that's going to give us 426, and lastly we're going to go up by 10, and that gives us 430. Six. So parents and teachers, if students are having a hard time skip counting just in their head, feel free to give them an empty number line as one uh, differentiation technique. Another differentiation technique is to give them a place value chart and then give them place value disks. And as they lay on additional tens, in this case because it says go up by tens, um, as they lay on additional tens, have them say the number and rebundle, bundle up and exchange if necessary or when necessary. The previous slide had the empty number line, and I, I chose this problem because it, it really, to me, asks for, it, it doesn't specifically, but it just begs for an empty number line. Why? Well, because we have a frog, and that frog is hopping backwards by hundreds. Okay, well, that, that really kind of suggests an empty number line, hopping doesn't that look like an empty number line? So if Henry starts at 815, how many times does the frog have to jump to get to 15? So the idea would be we're going to go backwards by 100, 
backwards by 100, backwards by 100, and we're going to just keep going until we reach 15. So that's 715, 615, 515, 415, 315, 215, 115, oops, 115, and then one more hop, which we can barely see. Let's see, one more hop. <laughs> and that 100, that one more hop gives us 15. So the question is, well, how many times did that frog have to jump? Well, that frog had to jump one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're going to squeeze in that last one, eight. It had to make eight hops. So one idea would be to allow our students to use a number line to model this problem. And that wraps up second grade, module three, lesson 20, where we're still modeling using that place value disk, uh, only this time we had crossed over the hundreds and we crossed over the tens.